Hello to all. My name is Andreas Abel. I'm located in Darmstadt, the headquarter of HBK, former HPM. And um, yeah, I want to show you some news about our Canvas integration. So let me start with my presentation here. This is what you all, I think you know. This is a sketch of a power source, inverter, machine, stuff which you need to measure. Um, therefore, you have the possibility to use several field buses, and I want to focus on the CAN bus today. But before we start with the CAN bus, let me just share you an overview of all the interfaces we have integrated into Perception and Genesis with the release of Perception 8.30, which was with the beginning of this week. So we are talking about CAN remote control and CAN data flow. We have integrated CAN. We have the Chendag API, which is a pure software interface, as well for control as for data. We have LabVIEW VIs nearly released, so they will be available soon. And on our GitHub, you can get Python drivers for data and remote control stuff. I'm pretty sure we should have more, but at the moment, that's all we have. So if you have ideas for that, please let me know. Now let's come back to CAN or CAN FD in our HPK Power Analyzer. On this picture, you can see a Gen 4 TB. Most of you may know it. And the CAN ports are located at the backside of the Genesis. We have two D sub 9 connectors, and each connector contains two ports. So overall, we have four CAN ports available. Before we start working on that, I guess I should you hand over or show you some details. Our CAN bus offers three main features. So we have CAN input. That means recording. We can record up to 1,000 CAN signals from all four ports. That means from the CAN bus into the Gendag mainframe, including, including sorry, local storage and standalone recording. Furthermore, we can output our CAN signals, so we can transfer up to 1,000 results, uh, result blocks per second, with up to 240 results each to the CAN bus. And last but not least, CAN acquisition control. So you are able to remote control the Genesis mainframe without using perception completely with a CAN. And this is something, all three topics, I will show you how they are working in a live session. Some technical overviews. <clears throat> we have the four ports with 250 channels each. We have two D sub 9 connectors, as mentioned. The CAN port one is a bit special because that is the only one who can input, output, and can do uh, um, can can run as acquisition control. The ports two to four are input only. Acquisition control, for example, can be start, stop, trigger, trigger arm, activate out of range, go to pause or preview or resume. And we also have for handshake signals like mainframe is in idle mode, in recording mode, in pause mode, or whatever else. The CAN port one can be used as output result publishing with up to 1,000 result blocks per second, as already mentioned. So here are a few things which are good to know. The GenDuck CAN interface does not offer any internal termination resistors. I show this because I'm often asked for that, and unfortunately, there is none. 
Uh, for all those who are using an MX471, they cannot use it as before if a GAN interface is integrated. The reason, therefore, is um, yeah, we want to, to go from, from perception recording to mainframe recording. So, due to that, uh, the MX471 was only talking to perception. And now we moved over to talking to the mainframe, and therefore we needed an internal CAN, which we now have. But don't care, you can connect your MX471 to the internal uh, CAN interface, and then you can use it as before. If you use the peak dongle, we offer as a one channel solution. Um, this one is not working anymore if you have the integrated CAN dongle because we needed to set some priorities. And so the internal four channel CAN thingy um, one. It is a factory installed option, so you have to order it with your mainframe if you want to order it afterwards. Yeah, there are more options. You can send us back out your mainframe or our field services coming to you on site and doing the installation. If you own already an peak dongle and you do not have the integrated CAN interface, then you can use your peak dongle uh, in the future. So all perception versions beginning with 8.20 can be used with the existing peak dongle, then you only have the CAN port one with all its features available. I think that's a good compromise. Technical overview part two. I think uh, there is no need that I start reading it aloud. Um, yeah, if you have questions to that, please post them in the Q and A's for answering afterwards. Now, I want to show you something about CAN recording. We have something for CAN publishing and CAN remote control. And you know the topic of that session, accelerate electric motor testing, and that all leads to it. If you use CAN remote control, CAN publishing and recording, you have all in one system to speed up your test. And I think we should start with CAN recording. What you now see is Perception 830 in a live demo. So if I do something wrong, it might end up in a mess. Here I have a hardware view. So I have, an, I have a Genesis 4TB with three power cards in it and a four channel or four port CAN card. For CAN recording, it's quite easy, I have to say. Um, you need the CAN DBC file from the CAN bus you want to record the data. Then you need to import it into Perception. And most of you, I guess, do know how to load the sensor database. But this is our door into perception. With the right click of from your mouse to the sensors, you can import a CAN database. If you do so, you find in imported or in my CAN, depending where you want to have it, new sensors which are located in the sensor database. These are in my uh, situation, the MC temp 1 to temp 4. A uh, second possibility is you create your own CAN sensors. Therefore, we have here a section which is called Add Sensor CAN. And if you click on it, you need to specify the location. Then you have a new sensor which you can integrate. Um, put in all the necessary information, and then you can use the sensor in the settings field. And this I will show you now. Experienced perception user now know that you can assign signals and channels here in this section. 
analog channel, you can design analog channels, markers, timer counter, and so on. And here we have the CAN channels. The only thing you need to know at which CAN recorder you want to assign your signals, where are they physically connected? In my special case, it is CAN recorder three, because CAN recorder one I want to use for publishing and CAN remote control. So, just one possibility is to type in the, some letters of a sensor name and it will appear. Let me go for two, that might be enough. And we are nearly done, nearly done. The only thing now we have to take care of is the baud rate. So here in the acquisition window, as well as in settings, mainframe setup, can, we have the setup for our can. As we are going to use can port three, um, don't take care. This setting is belonging to everyone. It is mentioned here, but don't take care about that. So CAN2, for me, it's 500 kilobits. It's already activated, and this is working in my situation. If you are going for CANFD, you can adjust here the multiplier for this use. You can do several settings uh, here in the basic or in the advanced section, but typically you don't need to change anything. Only one point you take, you have to take in account is, are we the only participant on the field bus or are there more? Because if we are the only participant, then you need to switch off the listen only mode. What does that mean? If your can sender sends out a signal for a special recipient, that one needs to acknowledge that a signal was received. If we are the only one, then we need to do the acknowledge. If we are listening on a field bus, we are not allowed to acknowledge because that might disturb the bus. So, as in my situation, it is a point to point connection. I need to switch off this listen only mode. And immediately I get an information in perception that the bus state is changed. Something has changed, it is indicated. So, okay, it seems that something happened. And if I have done everything correct, I can take a new sheet, activate a meter, and take my recorder. Have two signals, start preview. And now you can see the temperature in my office. The sensors are not closely together, they are spread in the room, so don't take notice of the difference between the both, but it is overall 24 degrees in my office. That's it for can remote can recording. Sorry. Easy, I have to say. Okay, now I want to show you CAN Publishing. As already mentioned, mainframe setup, it is only possible on CAN port one. And on CAN port one, we now want to output something. We have to decide in which CAN mode, is it basic or is it FD? You know the best what you need in that case or what you want to go for. In my case here, it's again basic. You can choose the update, update rate if you want to have one update per second or up to 1000, as I have shown you in the technical details already. The effect, what happens if you change that, I can show you immediately. In some cases, <clears throat> sorry, there might be the need 
to define a start index for sending out values. Um, you can specify the start, can message ID index, correct word, um, by yourself. So we have a default setting from 100, but if you want, you can go to one, two, three, and then you're done. Okay. That's all for here. Now we need to decide which signals should be published. So let's go for publishing. We are still in the settings sheet. And here we have some more information and more stuff. So here the last three columns are for the can. Publish to can, we have three predefined signals with a predefined uh, can message ID and the message ID byte range, lower four bytes or if you want, the upper four bytes. Let me choose a few signals just that you can see what happens. And as I said, my start index should be one, two, three. It starts here with one, two, three, lower byte range, one, two, three, upper byte range, and so on. You can individually change it as well here. So you can make your own order of appearing of the appearance of the signals. <clears throat> Once you have done all that, then it's time to create the, send, the can DBC file. Therefore, we have here the button create can DBC file or save can DBC file. The place where it is stored, you can redefine. So it's easy for you to find it afterwards for your automation system. I will leave it like it is because at a later point, I can show you the values which are published. Before we go to that point, we define can remote control. Um, I can do that, this from here, but I want to go back to acquisition. Because acquisition is one of the main windows you are working in. And here on the right side on the button, we have configure can acquisition control. If you press here, you will see that you end up in the same window as we have been a lot of times before. So the way to this is a bit easier. For can remote control, can port one is the one who can do that. We go to control and here we need to enable it. <clears throat> Once we have done that, we need to decide on which command message ID. The command message ID might be the power analyzer, Genesis, can ID, however you want to call it. That is the ID where you send the commands to the power analyzer. Let me take the 31. And the event message ID could be 31 as well or something different. I will leave it as zero. Now, if we want to remote control something, we need to know the commands. And um, yeah, as we do not want to search very long for a menu, we have here a button which opens a PDF document with the commands we have implemented so far. This is a list which we will extend in the future with more commands depending on the features we have implemented. Let me take an example here with a mainframe control. So these are the most important, for example, start a recording, stop a recording, go to preview, or ask for the mainframe acquisition state, the so synchronization state and all that stuff. And the way you have to deal with it uh, is shown here. So we have a eight byte command range or an eight byte range where the first two bytes are for the command, for channel number, the recorder number, for a value which needs to be set and special functions. 
for however yeah special functions let's say how to use it let me click here to synchronization check because here we have a proper example so we have a value and an answer what could be what and if you ask for synchronization state for example you have all the possibilities which are implemented so far even either cat distributed clock ptp synchronization iric and everything so this gives you a value back and this is done for each and every function so recorder id digital uh, i open number and so forth uh, so forth even you can change sample rates technical unit you can set zero you can sh shunt your talk and all that is described in this manual how that works to make it a bit easier for me and to demonstrate a colleague of mine did a demo program this is running on my computer it uses a can dongle this can dongle is connected to my usb port 1 I just need to adjust the baud rate, the command message ID, and the event message ID. That must be the same as we did up front. Then I can connect. And now you can see here the values which are on the bus, not running at the moment because we are not in preview mode. Short description, here you can see in a few seconds the message we send out, and here we can see what we receive. So for example, going to preview, we see preview and the structure of the command. And in order to change the uh, color of this button, we made an get acquisition state. The acquisition state now is preview, and you have seen perception is following immediately. Let me change it here. I pressed stop. And it is stop. Going back to preview, it is preview. So, this is more or less everything I have to show. Um, as I want to have a few minutes left for questions and answers, I think it's the important things, uh, things I have shown to you. With all that, you can speed up your motor testing. Um, you get a handshake from all the remote control stuff. You can use perception as a monitoring tool. You can use perception as a tool in parallel, or you can skip perception totally and just run the power analyzer in your automation system. Um, the slides which are here in the background prepared, that they contain some information which I have not shown now to, um, yeah, we can can make a fast step through, which show you what I have shown to you at the moment. So you have a kind of reminder what steps are necessary. So from my point of view, I'm at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.